Hello and welcome. I've got a very special guest here with me today. It's Rowetta, the original co-singer with Happy Mondays. And she is one of the most in-demand house music top liner, top line writers and vocalists, and one of the most sampled. It's an absolute pleasure to have Rowetta here with us. Rowetta, warm welcome to you. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. I'm really well, thank you, considering we're not allowed out anywhere. But yeah, no, it's um I'm really, really well. Um yeah, it's just I feel uh, dead good at the moment. You know, I think everybody does. We went on a bit of a lull, but because there's news, there's hope now. Everybody's yeah. feeling a bit better. And there's nothing better than when you go out even to the shops and people are smiling a bit more and looking forward to holidays. And exactly. Yeah. Going back to school for a lot of people uh, doesn't affect me, but I, know, I just know people are happier when they get their lives back. So I'm um, looking forward to something to look forward to, hopefully, in the summer. I completely agree with you. I think it's been so strange. It's just, you know, it, especially through winter as well. It's just like, when, when's there going to be an end to all of this? And I think the vaccine um, coming through, that's really made a big difference. And the effects of it is, you know, it's been really positive. So hopefully things will continue to get better over the next couple of weeks, months. And as we get into the summer, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a really busy time for you. We're going to get into all that so how have you found lockdown how is the whole thing been for you what have you been up to well i've been saved really by the music and the fact that a lot of people that we've said we'd work together or have wanted to work with or have said they'd want to work with me we've always touring or they're always away um, so especially if you see them in Ibiza or something in the summer, you say, oh, we must work together, but then they're away to somewhere else and on tour. So this lockdown, I've been able to work with people that you either wouldn't have had time before or we just didn't do it. You know, you didn't get together. But now it's um, it's like people, they must think, oh, who can we get to work with? And oh, we said we'd work with her. So I've, I've you know, I've been where I've done stuff with Todd Terry, Kenny Dope, um, just like Junior Sanchez. Salado, Oliver Heldon. I've just worked with some of the biggest names and it's literally because of lockdown, I believe. And I think my writing has got so much better because of it, because I'm literally waking up every morning, singing, writing, any ideas I get in my head, I'm getting them down straight away because you can now. I'm not I'm not thinking, oh, I've got to go to such a place. I've got to catch a plane. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been brilliant for that. And I've, I've just, I've, I think I did, I've done three this week that I really, I really love the tunes I'm doing at the moment. And um, somebody called, um, well, I'm not going to say, but there's somebody of another <laughs> name's just sent me, literally just sent me an email with an idea on just today. So it's, I've said I'll do that in the weekend and I've got two to do this weekend. And if it was, if it was locked, if it wasn't locked down, I'd be away, I'd be singing somewhere. So I just wouldn't have had time to um, get these ideas down. So for that, it's been brilliant. But, um, you know, yeah. gigs, gig, missing gigs is just, it's when you do these tunes, you do these tunes because you want to perform them out or you yeah. want to hear them the club and it's been none of that. So it's not all been good. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you hear a lot of artists speaking, you know, they're, you know, saying similar things. They've had a lot of time to focus on their craft, uh, writing, producing albums. Whereas, you know, before lockdown, there was just no way they could do any of that, you know, um, people producing albums in three weeks, you know, which is unheard of. Um, mm -hmm. So things have certainly changed, you know, in that dynamic. Um, but I suppose, like you said, you know, you do miss the touring side of things. But, you know, with you spending more time writing, there's going to be a lot of tours. There's going to be so yeah, much to put out big... there. Oh, you hope so, but it's just, you know, when you just do a tune, you want to do it straight away. You want to perform it in front of an audience straight away and see which ones work. And we're so used to that. And so now these tunes I've done last year that I haven't been able to perform all year. And yeah, radios, it's been on radio and DJs are playing them on the live streams. But I can't wait. Luckily, if it had gone another year, I think it would have been too much. But I can't wait to get up on a stage and start performing these songs that I've been writing because that's been it's been terrible and obviously no income people think everybody's millionaires when you're in this music business but the thing is your your outgoings are just you know ex terrible outgoings and and nothing coming in when you're a lot of musicians and not just the musicians the lighting guys our techs our sound guys all the people all the roadies all the people we work with a lot of them have had nothing and they've been excluded from um, from grants and things so it's been tragic for musicians and everybody in the music industry it's been awful i know a lot of the buildings are getting money but a lot of the people who work with us luckily i mean i had some savings so I've, you know you've got you've just gone through your savings like and i've not got little children 
um, I need to take care of my children who are quite old now so and they they're self-sufficient but um it's been absolutely awful but there's a sign of hope now that we're getting out of it so if we've if we've got this far if you've managed to get this far because not everybody has some people have lost their lives some people have lost their marriages some people have lost everything um through this lockdown and you know it's been it's been a lot worse for other people so if you've managed to get this far just keep being strong keep holding on we're nearly at the end hopefully but um yeah i'm, I'm not i'm not um just i'm not going to rely on it being june or whatever because you can't we don't know when it's going to be but but it feels like it's going to be this year it feels like we're not going to have to do another year of this and um yeah i just got to do some gigs soon we've got loads lined up a lot of us i've got to postpone them like glastonbury we were booked for that's cancelled again this year and isn't till next year and so there's going to be a few like that um, amsterdam was the first place and um, we had a gig in amsterdam happy mondays first people to cancel put it back to january this year and now it's been put back to january next year so that's a long time to wait with no gigs if everybody puts it back to 2022 um, it'll be shocking but at the moment we've got an arena tour in November with James the band James I've got quite a few gigs with Bez and a few on my own that I'm really looking forward to and um, as early as May I think I think there's some socially distanced ones as early as May and I'm if you can't tell I'm so excited though. <laughs> just, just about doing anything I mean at the moment I would sing in somebody's garden if it was allowed but that's not allowed, <laughs> no, not allowed to sing anywhere and um, I went to a big twice last year and literally i thought I'd, I'd get away with doing a couple of little private gigs but it was just not on you know you couldn't walk down the street without your mask on so there's no way i was allowed to sing um but it's devastating because it's it's my life performing it's yeah. everything and yes i love singing at home in my studio <laughs> um it's very creative and everything i can't believe a lot of the singers haven't been as creative uh, maybe they don't, don't write but um if i was them i'd record a load of covers or something it's, it's um it's this great opportunity you've had and people are saying to me you've got a new tune coming out every week well there's a reason i've not stopped you know not everything i've done has been released and stuff but i've just not stopped it's um i, I live and breathe it the i didn't live and breathe music i don't listen to music all the time i listen to radio a lot and talking people talking but um because i need to switch off at times from the music uh, so I do listen to a lot of talk radio rather than music and when I'm working on a tune I don't really listen to anything else um, other than the tune I'm working on so um, that's interesting it's, isn't it yeah yeah it is because I'm really I'm really focused and and people don't realize it everything looks so easy but I'm so focused on what I do um, and I think that's why I've had a great lockdown in that respect and you know and, and working with people who've got millions of followers and things you know it's I'm not that ambitious I just do it and I love it I do it out of love and passion and yeah that, that comes across <laughs> when these big names come and want to work with me I haven't got a manager or anything sorting it out I don't you know I've not got any of that I've never had that I do it all myself I do all the social media myself and so when these big names approach me it's to me it's like wow because I've not tried it's literally now because they know that's my voice or that's I've written that song and that's amazing to me and I think that's because of social media because before people wouldn't necessarily know that was my voice if it's been sampled they might not know that I'm on boom boom pow black eyed peas they might not have known but they know now because I make I try and make sure everybody knows or um yeah sometimes they think Robin S does all the show me love there's a lot of versions where it's me at the beginning and I needed to tell people that and this is it you know um you know you've got that you know that heritage you've done so much um you know we can talk all day here in terms of you know the people you've worked with uh you know you, you featured with some you know really big hits um that you know are still getting played left right and center you know you turn on the radio your hits are there and i love your passion and you know that really comes across you know you can see you know you're in this for the love of it uh, and you know thank you for touching on so many of the artists who you know some of the many of the people working in the industry who are struggling and it's been really difficult it's not been an easy uh, ride this whole pandemic but you know we are hopeful we hope things will change um, but you know going back on your passion you know that just comes across loud and clear have you always been this passionate about music no really not at all um just 
only when I was older, probably. Um, I just used to love to have fun and party. I loved boys. I loved everything you're not supposed to love. I didn't love school. I used to wag it all the time. I was really, really bad at everything. But I, mean, I, I never got anybody. My mum used to say, shut up when I'd sing. I never got anybody. I, I get, so you hear these kids saying, I came out of the womb singing. And, you know, if I had done that, my mum would have said, be quiet, be quiet. So I'm trying to have uh, deliver a baby. Um, no, I've just, I've never been encouraged that much when I was younger until um, when you spotted by somebody and the, the people that spotted my voice went, wow. And then the minute I got in front of an audience properly, maybe in a talent competition, I think it was, that's when people all went, whoa, they got goosebumps. I'd not had that school. I'd had no encouragement or anything or from my mum or family. None of my family sing. So it was, it's, to me, it's like a gift. I don't know where it's come from. And I do take it seriously, but it's a gift. But when I was younger, I wasn't that much into music like a lot of people. I like my football. I like punk as, and the music genre I liked when I was a kid. I was just very rebellious. I actually like a punk and I listen to punk. Um, it's only later on, really. Probably when the Happy Monday split up, though, I really took music and music seriously. And I found the internet really helpful where you can download things and read about people and and learning my craft i've done a lot of that and, and working with the people i want to work with by with the social media and the internet before the internet i was you, you are a little bit stuck i don't know how we communicated but we didn't have mobile phones when i was young you know if you wanted to work with somebody you'd have to send them a cassette through the post you know and then send they'd send something back you'd have to arrange a studio and meet them in the studio and try and book it. And if it didn't work out, record and uh, try and book another session, which all cost money. It's so easy for kids now to record stuff. It wasn't then. We didn't have computers the same way. We didn't have anything. And I don't that's, know. Yeah. Manage. That's when you really did need um, a manager and a record label and all that. Now you can do a lot of it yourself. TikTok, you know, do a video, sign up to TikTok, do a video, two minutes. Yeah. You've got, you know, two million followers or whatever else. That's different. That's fame. That's that's fame. That's different. Yeah. If you want to be famous, there's lots of ways of being famous. But for I mean, really studying your craft and getting better as a musician or a singer, um, which I, I definitely have over the, through the internet. I don't like the fame part at all. Uh, that's anybody can be famous. TikTok's about miming more than anything, as far as I can see. Um, which you know, and and miming is one of the things that I can't bear. Like Lolita Holloway, people like that. She should have been in the black box video right on time. It's her voice, you know, and um, so it's a lot of people have, I've had um, Cheryl Cole, my voice coming out of somebody else's mouth at the Brit Awards on a Cheryl Cole tune. And I said, no, they couldn't do it. And they did it anyway, because, you know, Miss, Miss Big Time and all the, and all her, um, you know, her company, her record label. <laughs> You can't, you can't argue with the big boys when no, you no, decide, decide to do something. But so you need to become a big boy yourself. You need to, or a big girl, you need to become. Don't let it happen. And every time, I mean, I'm still getting sampled and going, "That's not your voice. It is my voice. Everybody knows it's my voice." So you're going to pay me royalties. That's what you're going to do. If you're not going to credit me, which I really want the credit, you can, I'm not going to lay down and let it happen anymore because it's getting on my nerves. But now I've made sure everybody knows my voice. So when they hear it. I can say this is me and there are websites where you can prove it. The amount, it's a load of hassle trying to prove it's you, but I've done that. I've laid the foundations. You have to go to certain websites, show them where the sample is, where they've taken it from, what it's on now. And I've done all that. And it's not just for the royalties, which I will get and I do get. It's because I want people to they need to pay because they didn't credit me. It's disgusting they didn't credit me. And it must be because of greed that they don't credit me. They want all the money themselves. Stuff. I don't care as much about the money. I want yeah. them to message me and say, that's Rowetta at the beginning of that. Because that mm. gets me more work as well. Mm. Which, you know, I'm interested in working with people, but also people saying, that's her voice. Not thinking it's somebody else's. It's it's real horrible thing for me. Being mm. Somebody um, not respecting my voice or putting me down as a backing singer when I'm not a backing singer. Things like that. I'm really trying. I think it's really important that um, you tell people that you want respect at least. And by not crediting me on these things or calling me a backing singer, to me it's disrespectful because they don't do it with other people. They don't do it with white girls as much. Talisa from Endubs doesn't get backing singer from end up she gets to lisa from end up so if you want to say i'm from happy mondays i'm rowetta from happy mondays that's what i am i am a co-singer i'm a singer i'm not a backing anything so um i choose to do backing vocals sometimes that's up to me on a happy mondays tune because i'm in the band but um todd terry did backing vocals for me last year on a tune he's not a backing singer he's todd terry 
is a great producer and writer, but if he does backing, call him a backing singer, I dare anyone to call something. <laughs> you know, you're going to get the same response from me and he'll tell him about backing singer. He sampled me though quite a bit without giving me any credit as well. Um, and I told him off when I met him, you know, and it's like, he's Todd Terry, he's a legend, but I'm not having it. Stop it, Todd. Stop sampling me and not giving me the credit. <laughs> <laughs> he first did it in 1990. He shouldn't yeah. be doing it 30 years later, but he does. But um, but as a, as a, um, I suppose now we've we've done four tunes together and he's done backing singing on one of my tunes. Um, so we work well together. So I love Todd. So, I mean, it's a, it's a massive issue. Um, you know, um, people um, plagiarise and taking samples, you know, when you put in a you know, graft for it, you've worked, and, you know, it's, it's sad, it's, it's, it's a shame. Um, I think, you know, it's good that you've put record labels on blast for that, because really... Yeah, pick, on, pick on the big, big artists and big labels, but I'm not taking it lying down, and they've actually, so we've, because of social media, they've actually said, uh, just last week, and somebody said, I can assure you it's not you, and I said, I can assure you it is, and then a lot of people, and the head of DJ Mag, the guy who runs DJ Mag, said, we all know a voice. You can't argue with what people know, that's my voice, at the beginning of Show Me Love, they know when they, when they hear the B, it's me, so that's what, um, it was like... It's ridiculous. You, you, if, you, if you're going to argue and say, are you sure you it's not you singing? It's always it's the same sample. It's not, um, it's not even an argument. But um, yeah, I'm actually going to work with the person who said, are you sure you it's not you? Because they're a big name. And that's who I just got the email off. And um, they're a big name, but they genuinely didn't realise it was my voice. And now they do. They're working with me. We're doing a tune together probably later today. So uh, we're going to start that. So it's, I said something good can come out of this um, because... I'm, I'm cool with it once they acknowledge it's me, but if you tell me it's not me, I'm going to make you punish. I'm going to let everybody know. Because I can just, I can get royalties from it anyway. But if they say it's not me, I'll spread it all over the internet and tell them, it's, that's my voice. You can't just, it's, I mean, I, I did it years ago, this particular song, the old sample, I sang it years ago. So it doesn't matter to me if they use it. Just ask. If you don't want to pay me, just ask, can we use it? I might let you anyway. I still get royalties when it's played on the radio, but if they, I think they're worried that I'm going to ask for a big, big fee or say no. Just try and ask me. Anyway, that's I'm not it. Gonna... Just ask, <laughs> communicate. <laughs> no, it's good. I'm glad you've you know got your point across. It's really important. I think you know um, anybody would feel you know grieved if they had you know their talent just being used and you know they're not being recognised for it. I think it it's the worst the thing anyone can do. You get people in studios that, you know, and they're just down as an engineer or something and they come up with a keyboard before or a guitar line and they're not credited, you know, and they might have written it, but it's hard to prove. It's really hard to prove that it's you on a record. People are too greedy if something's a hit. So it's important. Um, and not everybody's going to be sampled as much as I am, of course, but it's even, even if you're, if you've, played a triangle on something make sure everybody knows because you can get money for that and if they're not mentioning it but or if you've done a favor for somebody this favors but if something does really well they should share that that success with you and when they don't there's something really greedy about it and i can't stand greedy people and they should be exposed if it's just for greed if you didn't know like this guy was telling me did he, he really didn't know it was my voice that's fine i'll show you it is but that's fine but the record label knew and that's just greedy it seems to me um, a lot of artists are more clued up these days and, you know, um, they won't allow, you know, um, record labels to, um, you know, nick their voices or, you know, take samples that they've used. It doesn't happen, what, to, the, it doesn't happen to everyone, That is, is, is the truth, though. Yeah. It doesn't. A lot of the peop people they're sampling, they're old samples, and a lot of the people, they're not here anymore as well, the samples used. But it's like Marvin Gaye's was sampled um, famously on, bl on Blurred Lines. It yeah, was a huge issue with that, wasn't it? it yeah, was no, that's quite yeah. recent. That's quite recent, they've done it. And he's not here anymore, but he won. Marvin Gaye mm. won. You know, mm. and it's a huge hit. If it's the bigger the hit, then the more people go, hold on a minute. But I mean, to me, even if it's not a hit because of the internet, people send me things that they think I'm on all the time. And I get asked, can we use your voice all the time? So I'm on it, even if it's not released yet. That's what you should do. You're supposed to ask. Oliver Heldens is three point something million followers. He said, can I use your voice on a particular tune last year, Rave Machine? And it's on Tool Room, which is a massive record label. And it was a big hit, Rave Machine, because he asked me, can we use it? 
and did it the right way, you know, and paid me money to use it. And, and then I get royalties as well. Why don't people just do that? That's, that's, and my name's on the right. I just said, can you just make sure, forget about the money, just put featuring Rowetta. That would mean the world. And that's what it says. Rave Machine, Oliver Heldens, featuring Rowetta. That means more than any money, believe me. It seems to me, um, you know, again, going back to your passion and your love for music, um, you know, you absolutely love this and you love what you do. When did you recognise this gift and when did you, at what point did you recognise it? And when you did recognise it, what was your thoughts in terms of what, how far you could go with it? Um, I didn't, I, as I say, I used to sing. Um, to, I auditioned for a choir when I was about eight. I didn't get in because I stood out too much. So I didn't think anything about it. I just didn't sing as much because my mum did used to say be quiet a lot. Um, and then it was when I did, I went in for a talent competition because my stepsister did at Butlins. I think it was about 10 when the very first, I think I was just stood next to her when she was doing it and just sang along to something and somebody said I got a good voice then. So a couple of years later, when we went to Butlins, I entered and won. <laughs> you and I have got something in common. <laughs> I, I, I did a dance competition in Butlins years ago and won. <laughs> did you win a holiday though? Because I used to win a free holiday. No, no, fun. not that far. Oh, no. <laughs> I just mine won. Was years ago. But yeah, no, every time I won, I won a free holiday to do the quarterfinals. Then you win a holiday to do the semi-finals. No, 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 not as uh, no. I didn't get, I didn't get that. That far. was years ago. That's what you used to be like. <laughs> oh, brilliant. No, but um. So that's where I first did, and then I didn't, still didn't take it seriously. And then um, I went to this fee paying school that my mum couldn't afford, so she got an extra job as a barmaid. And the lady who, the landlady, was dying of cancer upstairs. And because I was only 13, or 12 or 13, I'd go and sit upstairs with her uh, while my mum was working behind the bar. And I used to sing along to her when uh, she put records on. And um, she just said, You've got an amazing voice, get down on that stage downstairs, I like a free and easy night with a, an organ. And um, I got down and it was the response of the audience. They all stood up and was, they'd all were saying they'd got this um, goosebumps and everything. I was just, I never took it that seriously. And then that seeing the audience like that and the warmth I got and the love, that was became addictive. It's just, it was just an amazing feeling. I couldn't believe it because I'd never had that ever for singing the same way I got it then. I got it at Butlins, but the audience was quite far away. But in this pub, I just remember um, the audience just um, it's like it's a big feeling of love it's amazing and yeah that's that's what I'm still addicted to that I'm not getting at the moment that that buzz <laughs> but I genuinely there's certain songs I sing that you connect with the audience and they just go wow and um, you can hear them gasping sometimes and it's amazing not always with Happy Monday songs obviously although on some of those when I do my own bits that I've created these sections where I just wail there's one there's quite a lot of the intros I just wail at the beginning before the rest of the band come on and you can see like even the sound engineer going wow and that's just if you can do that to people and you can I know not many singers can give me goosebumps but when you see somebody singing live and they do that to you and it just gets you that's it's an amazing thing to be able to do that oh, yeah. um yeah it, it really is i mean I, I remember i used to sing just a couple of lines to simon cowell i just sing a couple of lines and he sees that many singers i used to love it because i knew i could just sing any lines and it just got his always oh, hairs would stand up on his arm and it, it's just that my voice did that to him and i love that and i loved it he'd go Oh, you really can sing anything, can't you? <laughs> He's just, he, I just got a buzz out of that because I got on with him anyway. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great confidence booster. But it's, it's just that feeling. It's like, it really is like a big hug of love. It's, um, it's like nothing else. And yeah, if I sang ballads all the time, I would get that reaction all the time. I just, I don't, I, I always think I'm not old enough, but I'm getting on a bit now. I really should start probably doing more ballad type <laughs> cabaret -y sets. But at the moment, I'm still in the Mondays. I'm still doing house tunes. I'm not ready to do, although I do a lot of, um, I do a lot of charity balls, which I enjoy. That's where I start, I do those songs that get you. Things like A Change Is Gonna Come and things. And I've done quite a few with the BBC Philharmonic, um, which is amazing when you do those heartfelt songs and the Manchester Camerata and other orchestra. So, um, yeah, when I do those, that's when you really get people and people, people crying, which is amazing. Could you tell us about the early days of um, Happy Mondays? What was that like? 
Um, it was very mad. They'd already, they'd already <laughs> been, they, was, they were like more of a cult band. So when I first saw them, they were they were playing like a hall in Widnes. And then my first gig with them was GMEX, sold out GMEX two nights there. So between when I first saw them and the band that I joined, um, it was just mad. It's just that the first song I sang on became a big hit, Step On. So we went from being, you know, it's not the band I thought I was going to join. I thought I was going to join like a more of a punk band because I was a bit of a punk where you'd be playing halls. We went really huge, really, and, and doing Top of the Pops just after I joined them. Um, but it was, um, you know, they had problems then, but we, it, because we were younger, it was, it was like one big party. And the problems would be some people were addicted to things. But, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I, lo I, love, I love partying. Um, I loved traveling on a tour bus with, with a load of lads. Um, I loved gigging every night and touring America, touring Europe. Um, yeah, it was just, it was just a, um, a blast, really. It was just fantastic. I mean, I can't believe we're still doing it 30 <laughs> years later. That's amazing. But not to the same, not in the same way. We don't all live on a tour bus for six weeks. <laughs> Couldn't do that now. But also, everybody's settled more now. Like, Sean, is, he goes home to his wife and his kids. And you're night. all really busy as well, aren't you? I mean, there's so yeah. many different things that all of you are doing. Um, yeah, definitely, you know. well, Sean and Bez do a lot of television. Yeah. Sean yeah. loves his telly. Um, you know, I really do love concentrating on the music. I might do, the, I've been offered a couple of TV shows with Sean and Bez that I might do. If the subject's right, then it's, <laughs> then it's right. But um, I don't want to go too much down the reality TV uh, thing because it's really distracting to what you do, especially on social media. It's much better for me to focus on the music rather than having to talk. It's like when Bez or Sean do something, I end up talking about, oh, Sean was on Mr. and Mrs. yesterday. I end up having a load of people talking about that. And really, I'm off, I wake up in the morning, I want to talk about music usually, or what I'm up to, or where I'm traveling to, or, you know, gigs and who I'm working with. Not necessarily, but they all think that it's, it's like they all think we're all one thing. And so, yeah, whatever they do, does I do um, get people commenting to me or tagging me and everything. Everything Manchester I get tagged in. Anything with a B on it, anything from anything that's Mancunian, anything with Bez and Sean in, they tag me in. And it's like, I just spend my morning removing tags. <laughs> like, anytime anybody likes it, I get the alert. And it's like, no, it's, it's a bit boring. Every morning. Um, like it's like, I'm not even on that picture. I'm not in, involved in that TV show. I'm not, you know, but you know it's lovely though because it's lovely that people associate you with these people and with these bands but um yeah i don't live and breathe anything apart from just life my own life and and i don't i can I, you know and i do with music probably is, i couldn't live without and, and that's been my savior during this lockdown but it's like i love manchester united and talk about that a lot but i don't i don't um so i'm not devastated if they lose i'm not you know it's not the end of my world, thank God. But, um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just I don't want to talk about football 24-7, and some people do. So, yeah. you know, I wake up in the morning, and there's, if there was a game last night. If there was a game last night, people want to talk about it the next day. I don't always want to talk about football. I'm probably thinking about music the morning after, not about who didn't score or who did score or what a fantastic win. I'm usually a couple of hours after the game, especially when we can't go to the games. I'm not really, you know, I've detached myself from football then and, um, or anything else I've been talking about the night before. If, you know, I'll, I'll watch a TV show as a switch off, but I'm not still thinking about it the next day usually. Yeah. Let's talk about um, touring. Um, we know that, you know, you said that you had a couple of tours. Uh, Amsterdam was supposed to be at the start of this year, but that got cancelled. Um, January, January yeah. 8th, 2020. 22. 22, yeah. And then on your social media as well, on the Happy Monday social media, I saw that you were reminiscing on your time in Australia uh, when you guys were out there. Um, are you planning on going overseas anytime soon? Well, we can't plan anything really yet, but because we've not, we're not allowed to travel anywhere yet. So, because I, I have this, I've said already, because it's making me remember, we had this amazing tour, Australia, New Zealand. Two years ago today, I'd have been in, um, I think it was Adelaide or Brisbane. Brisbane, had breakfast in Brisbane, I think I posted this morning. So, yeah, and it was just in the most amazing tour and sold out everywhere. So I'm sure we could do it again. But if we book anywhere now or, or announce anything now in Australia or anywhere in Europe and people buy tickets for this year now and they book the hotels and they book the flight, because I don't know if you can book flights now, but it, it, there's nothing worse. A lot of them won't get refunds for certain things. 
we just wait and let people get a good deal with the hotels and stuff because i've done it myself when this covid is really difficult if things are cancelled because of it it's not always easy to get your money back even though it's got to say you're going to guarantee the refund and a lot of the promoters won't plan a big tour yet the ones that the ones that are uh, you're able to tour they're already probably booked the places we'd play um up till the middle of next year probably so i hope we I hope we get to travel again i think everyone's just certainly in our in our little team because we've had so many gigs cancelled and put back we're just waiting to see we've got a lot of gigs um for next year on hold um because you've got to hold those venues it's like we're doing an arena tour with james at the end of the year but if we don't do it then november december we've got to then find a space next year to do it so that people can come and see us so we've got a space in case that doesn't happen we've got a space in the middle of the year next year and that's how because all the promoters and agents it's just really difficult for them but then the people who if they book a hotel to stay in birmingham one night to come watch us are they going to get the money back and the train fares mm. and it's just it's all i've done it before. there's lots of co complications with that isn't there so yeah, there people really booked the flights to come and see us in amsterdam mm. twice not everybody got the money backs for the hotels and the flights so you know it's it's probably going to be all right for amsterdam january 2000 and better have be 22 so because people are saying can we definitely book the flights always book and make sure you can get a refund that's what i would say for gigs or anything at the moment as long as they guarantee a refund then then you can do it and, and but if it is if you just read all the small print because um i've seen people lose everything from booking a holiday and i would hate them to do that over a gig that and anything I'm, I'm anything to do with that's some good advice yeah so guys just hold out until the time is right unless um, you live nearby and you, and you can, <laughs> yeah and you don't mind gig, you're gonna yeah. get a refund if it or or if you can't afford it and you and you just can only go on that date and you don't want to go next year if it gets cancelled then hold back but if if you're open so these people who still got the tickets for amsterdam from march 2020 and they've kept them they didn't go for the refund they've kept them because it was sold out and it's it's i think it's sold out again so they'll be able to come in january now that's if you can afford to do that that's brilliant but not everybody can i know that who who was your inspiration growing up who did you look at and think mm, i'd love to do what that person does honestly not really anybody nobody famous really um because i didn't i was i was into punk i love debbie harry and um, and I, I probably loved more. I loved voices. I loved Marvin Gaye. Um, when I was a little bit older, Tina Turner, especially because her life is a little bit mine mirrored it a little bit with the ex-husband and stuff. So um, you wouldn't wish to be like that though, uh, to have a life like that. But you know, because I didn't dream of being a singer or anything, I didn't really have role models like that. I was a re just rebellious. I just liked um, yeah, I just liked punk and. Yeah, Debbie Harry, I would say, as an icon, was I thought she was fantastic in women. Um, for the fashion, she's just, I thought she was stunning, and I love her voice, I love her songs. So, yeah, Debbie Harry, I thought, was very, very cool when I was a kid. And as I've got older, I, I admire so many people now. Um, but I tell them that when I meet them, if you, as you usually meet them, and I'm friends with some, um, but just so many people. Who would you like to collaborate with? Um, you know, most people I've, I've, I'm saying I'm ticking most of my boxes. The people I haven't worked with that I would like to. Marvin Gaye's not here anymore. He would have been number one. Calvin Harris, I still want to work with. He said it's, I think that might happen. Mark Ronson, I love. Um, Nile Rogers, who we, I've spoken to Nile about working with him. So it might, he's just always busy. So it might never happen. But I mean, he's put on Twitter, you know, yeah, let's make this happen, which is amazing. <laughs> I just love the fact he even knows me, you know, and he's like, hey, Rob. Um, so I'm actually quite already happy. I think that would be a fantastic collaboration. Well, so do I, so does he actually, he actually <laughs> said, let's get Johnny on it, Johnny Ma, which yeah. would be amazing. So, um, yeah, but I was just, he is just so busy, because he's always working with somebody, but um, it's just brilliant. He actually put on Twitter, let's do something together. It's amazing. And he knows, but he, he now he'll send me messages all out of the blue. Hey, Ro, as I say, it's just, he knows how it makes me feel. Cause I'm like, I can't even believe you know my name. <laughs> When I see him, he's always, you know, I go, I always go to meet him before or afterwards. Um, 
he's just he's just very very down to earth and lovely so that and that would be amazing to work with him but he's not um, he's not a dream because i know him now he knows who i am and it's not and he's just too busy and he may you know he, it might not happen you never so, know you never know, know. <laughs> no, and you never know but it's like so on my list mark ronson i think that's i think he'd be great for me um and for my voice i love what he did with amy winehouse um Calvin Harris, because I've already, I've already suggested it to him anyway, and he plays my tunes all the time. Carl Cox I'd like to because I just love him. Um, again, he plays my tunes a lot. But there's a lot of people, most of the people I want to work with, I'm working with or about to um, at the moment. There's not loads left. Um, David Bowie I would have really loved to. He's gone. Um, I've just done a tune with Paul Weller. She's brilliant. Um, and Gaz Cobain, who's fantastic. So... Um, yeah, Junior Sanchez, who's worked with everybody. I've just done a tune with him. So I'm just I'm just very, very lucky. I can't think. There's, I'm sure there's people I really want to work with, and I'll be like, oh, why didn't I say that? But um, no, anybody I really, really want to work with, though, um, there's only a few that are probably, are probably, I don't know, I don't know. There's only a few that I'm, I would like, oh, I wish. I can't think of anybody. No, I can't think of anyone else. I mean, it sounds like you've been so busy, um, you know, all the lists that you want to work with, you've pretty much worked with already. Obviously, Niles, we're still waiting for that one, but I, um, I, said, I, won't, I won't be surprised. I said before, David, get up, but only because it rhymes with Rowetta. Really <laughs> yeah, no, so, these, um... <laughs> yeah. so can we, um, can you give us any dates for anything for us to expect soon? Any releases? Yeah, I've got two releases just released now Pirate Copy and Rowetta Flashback. And that's on Kaluki Records, and that's only just come out. I'll be doing um, a live stream actually for a charity called Ollie's Army Vision, and that's on the 27th of March. Um, so if you just Google that, Vision, 27th of March, there's myself, Peter Hook, um, K Class, lots of great DJs on, and I'll be singing a lot of my collaborations with Salado, Oliver Heldens, Youssef, who's amazing, and um, Pirate Copy. So I'll be doing a lot of live singing at this virtual stream um i've also got a song out with a guy called dylan nathaniel who's from la and that's on salado's label solar and that's getting loads of plays by some top djs so um yeah it's, it's actually in the tech house charts it's at number 23 at the moment so um yeah and i'm just actually i'm just i'm just really really excited about the ones i've just done three this week as i've said and um, quite a lot of americans i'm working with at the moment you work with one crew and then they hear about you and they go hold on we love what you just did i noticed that with this dylan nathaniel they loved what i did with him can you do a tune with us this guy guys called pool house i've just worked with them and um somebody called francis mercier who's fantastic so uh, yeah the, the americans have just got hold of me now so i'm doing back to back to back at the moment working and i've just done um, a great tune with dolly and one with houseworks over in ibiza so i just sent the vocals to them yesterday so lots and lots coming out. But at the moment, yeah, two two out now. But um, the Youssef tune's beautiful, though I did uh, when we were when when we were free, and that's on Circus Records. So if you want to listen to a tune of mine, I just think it's just beautiful because it's talking about when will we be free again, and you know I love that, and it's getting a lot of plays off some big big names. So I just can't wait for the clubs to be open though, and then the tunes I can hear them in the clubs because um, <laughs> it's not the same without the clubs for house music obviously it's all right doing your virtual streams but there's nothing like hearing a tune in a club and then yeah. you know I mean the tune I did with Salado it's a rave tune you can rave in your bedroom but it's much better in a club <laughs> so, you know but we, we were talking about saving the rave so let's save the rave but it's like people go how can you say save the rave when we're all stuck in but it's like you've got to dream you've got to think about what it's going to be like when we come out I mean, I don't really stand in fields and rave that much anyway. I'm usually backstage singing um, in the nice toilets, not in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not in the portables, <laughs> like everyone else. Yeah. I can't stand the, the smell of the blue stuff they put on top of to, to disguise the smell of the everything. Ew. <laughs> Wow, uh, Rowetta, it's been an absolute joy to have you here today. You oh, know, uh, you. really busy with what you're doing. Um, you know, just glad that you could spare some a few minutes to come and sit down and talk to us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And oh, thank you for having me. A few minutes, I'm, I'm always taught loads. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get me say yes or no as an answer, ever. Never. I, I hope we can have you back again sometime soon. Anytime, uh, yeah. Just want to say thank you again, and uh, we wish you all the very best. All the best to you too. See you after lockdown. Maybe see you in person. When this yes. Is all Fantastic. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Take care.
Take care. Bye.